out your cameras, the rumors are true. You are looking at the perfect 10. 10. going guys welcome to the sunday night heat hosted by yours truly the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters right here on no holds barred wrestling podcast we are your canadian based WWE podcast that talks about the WWE and nope and no holds barred anything we say pun intended you can follow the podcast on twitter at no holds barred wp right, we are also available on facebook and instagram by searching up no holds barred wp if you'd like to subscribe to us and follow the podcast, you can follow us on youtube.com slash nhbwr, spreaker.com slash nhbwp, or on Stitcher Radio, guys, and iTunes, actually. iTunes. I keep forgetting about iTunes. But we are available everywhere for whatever is easier and convenient for you to follow us. Guys, this episode of the Sunday Night Heat is entitled, as you can see, The Perfect Ten, and this episode will solely be based on on the life and history of the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger, a guy from our hometown of Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Um, me and Corporate Cap have been watching this guy ever since he's been in the indie scene, like a long time ago. This guy has done everything possible in his career to work hard to where he's at now, and he deserves everything he's about to get. So I decided to do a Sunday Night Heat episode all about Ty Dillinger and the Perfect Ten. So basically a tribute episode to Ty Dillinger. So, without further ado, let's just get right into it, guys. And I'm going to basically go over a backstory of the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger. So, we'll start out in the beginning. He was born and raised in St. Catharines, Ontario, which is a city right next to ours. So, he's basically uh, billed from Niagara Falls, but he was born in St. Catharines, and he grew up here in Niagara Falls, though. He played hockey for over 10 years until he decided to leave the sport and enter professional wrestling. During Ty Dillinger's childhood, he was a fan of Rick Rude, Rick Martell and Mr. Perfect. Yes, a, lot, a big pun there, and I guess a big influence on the uh, the Perfect Ten character of Ty Dillinger. So his early wrestling career from 2002 to 2006, um, Ty Dillinger is actually his real name, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know Ty Dillinger's real name, it isn't Ty. It's not Ty Dillinger. Uh, he did uh, under the wrestling scene. We'll get in, I'll get into in a bit. Uh, wrestled under a, a name Sean Spears, but uh, Ty Dillinger's real name is Ronald William Arnell. Yes, Arnell. He is 36 years old, born on February 19th, 1981. And he was trained by Eric Young, coincidentally, and he just had a feud with him. So he was trained by Eric Young, and he just had a feud with him. Interesting, right? Um, yeah, he was born Ronald William Arnell. Ty Dillinger. And he was trained in the Hart Wrestling School in Cambridge, Ontario with Smith Hart, like uh, Ike Shaw, and Waldo Van Eric, or Von Eric. And then with Eric Young at the WrestlePlex School before receiving further training from Derek Wilde and Cody Diener. Uh, upon wrestling his debut match in, 2000, in March two, of 2002 uh, as Sean Spears, that's what he was being billed at then, he began his he began wrestling for some of the biggest independent wrestling promotions throughout Ontario and the United States, including Border City Wrestling, World Extreme Wrestling, and Blood, Sweat, and Ears. And I'm trying to remember which one it was he was part of when me and Corporate Cap used to see him back then. And this was when me and Corporate Cap first started watching wrestling, and then uh, we heard about like this independent scene around us, so we wanted to go check it out. And he was there, Ty Dillinger, wrestling as Sean Spears. And I actually remember liking him then. He was a really uh, great beginning wrestle, uh, beginner wrestler. Um, in February of 2005, uh, Arnell made an appearance on an edition of WWE Heat, so the Sunday Night Heat back then, in a tag team match against Rosie and the Hurricane. So that's interesting. So definitely go back and check that out, guys. There's probably a, uh, a tape somewhere on YouTube. After sending a tape to World Wrestling Entertainment officials, Arnell was called out for a trial in Buffalo, New York. He was signed to a developmental contract by WWE following the trial on January 21st, 2006. He made a cameo appearance in Cyber Sunday as an employee who calls himself Stan, and he gets super kicked by Shawn Michaels of D Generation X upon learning that he doesn't know the meaning of the word controversial. <laughs> um, 
you guys will remember, you remember that scene, Shawn Michaels was like freaking out backstage, if you don't remember, and then uh, he goes up to, to, <laughs> to Tyler and he goes, oh, you, what's your name? Stan. And then super kicks him right in the face, and then you remember all the papers went flying, and Shawn Michaels was like, I just kicked Stan. Oh, that was a great moment. But yeah, that was Ty Dillinger. Interesting enough. I didn't know that back then, and now I know now. It's actually uh, pretty cool. Um, after signing with WWE, uh, Arnell was assigned to the company's developmental territory, Ohio Valley Wrestling. If you guys don't know, that was the uh, developmental uh, territory. But even before NXT and before Florida Championship Wrestling, it was called OVW. Um, if you don't know, that's where actually John Cena and Batista made their debuts. They actually had a feud against each other as uh, John Cena was called the Prototype and Batista was called the Leviathan. Um, and I'm pretty sure Jim Cornette was something to do with that feud. So it, it's really interesting. So go back and see it if you guys haven't seen it already. Um, he made his OVW television debut as the Canadian sensation Sean Spears, where he defeated then SmackDown superstar Simon Dean. Simon Dean, yes. After his victory... Uh, Simon Dean attacked Spears until Spears was saved by Al Snow. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> a lot of this is going to shock a lot of you and it, uh, bring up some memories. Um, who fended off Dean with a chair. After his debut, Spears quickly made an impact on OVW with a short, undefeated streak that was soon ended by Aaron the Idol Stevens when Stevens made Spears submit. After this, Sean Spears formed a tag team with Cody Runnels and they feuded with the throwback for the Southern Tag Team Championships. On December 5th, 2006, Spears and Runnels won the tag team titles against the Throwbacks. After an OVW split with WWE, Spears debuted in WWE's new developmental territory, Florida Championship Wrestling. So guys, OVW became Florida Championship Wrestling after there was a split from that uh, and teamed up with Nick Nemeth, if you guys don't know who that is, that is Dolph Ziggler, to defeat the Puerto Rican Nightmares for the Florida Tag Team Championships on August 17th. Nearly a month later, Nemeth and Spears lost the titles to Joe Henning and Heath Miller on September 11th. Uh, so when 2008-2009 came around, Ty Dillinger actually made an ECW appearance, and I'll talk about that right now. On the August 19th episode of ECW, Spears made his WWE television debut as a heel under the name Gavin Spears as a part of Theodore Long's new superstar initiative in a losing effort to Ricky Ortiz. Um, after three month absence due to uh, competing in FCW, Spears returned to television on December 16th episode of ECW, where he lost to Fit Finley in what turned out to be his final match with the WWE then. On January 19th, 2009, Arnell was released from his contract. So, Ty Dillinger was in WWE at one point, ladies and gentlemen. I know if you, if you didn't know that, uh, I'm telling you right now, that it's crazy, right? He was in WWE, and he had his shot then, and you know he doesn't really look like he got pushed right, and maybe they didn't see it in him yet, but uh, he had a shot. They decided to part ways, and he was released from his contract. So from 2009 to 2013, he rolled the indie scenes, and I'll get into that now. The day before he had a release from WWE, Arnell had broken his hand. So he broke his hand before he got released and was unable to wrestle for 12 weeks. Following following that result, can you imagine that? you get released from your WWE contract and you can't wrestle for 12 weeks and you have a broken hand? So you can't even get back into it. it sucks. So on May 27, 2009, Spears wrestled at, in his return and lost to fellow WWE alumni Elijah Burke in a tryout dark match for total non-stop action wrestling at their Impact Television taping. Oh, boy. <laughs> yep. Ty Dillinger made a tryout in TNA, ladies and gentlemen. Who would have thought? Uh, he then wrestled for such companies as Ring of Honor and Independent Circuit in Mexico. So, yes, Ty Dillinger also did a Ring of Honor and uh, the indie scene in Mexico. And it wasn't then until 2013, on September 25th, or September 15th, 2013, it was reported that Spears had re-signed with WWE. He was assigned to the, the new developmental territory named NXT under the ring name Ty Dillinger. So this is where he first became uh, Ty Dillinger in September of 2013. He made his television NXT debut in a losing effort against Mojo Rawley. So there's another no name right there. In an early 2014, uh, Dillinger formed a tag team with Jason Jordan of American Alpha. Interesting, guys, right? It's crazy. You're going you're gonna to see here's some more names here. Uh, with the two described as a pair of blue chip athletes. The team of Dillinger and Jordan got their first televised win on April 17th episode of NXT by defeating Baron Corbin and Sawyer Fulton. <laughs> Right? Crazy, right? It's crazy. Ty Dillinger's been everywhere, man. He's wrestled a lot of people. Um, 
On August 7th episode of NXT, Ty Dillinger and Jordan lost in their first round of the NXT Tag Team Championship Tournament to Enzo Morne and Colin Cassidy. Enzo and Cass. On the February 25th episode of NXT in 2015, uh, Ty Dillinger's partnership with Jason Jordan officially ended with Jordan unhappy with their partnership and not initially tagging him in in a match. Uh, he jumped off the apron and walked out on Dillinger as he just went for the tag. After the match, in an enraged Dillinger called out his old partner, but instead was met with a quick loss to Baron Corbin. Uh, on August 12th, 2015, an episode of NXT, Dillinger debuted a new gimmick as the Perfect 10. So August 12th, 2015 is when the Perfect 10 gimmick uh, debuted, ladies and gentlemen, and he defeated Sol- Solomon Crow. At NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, number one, Dillinger faced the uh, debuting Apollo Crews in a losing effort. This was then when uh, Ty Dillinger was a heel. He debuted the, 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 the gimmick as a heel, and it was amazing, guys. If you guys go look at his YouTube videos from back then and the live events he did overseas and stuff, he had the perfect way to open a show. He would always open the show. He would always cut a promo, and the crowd would be so ecstatic, giving him tens, and then he'd cut a promo on the place he's from, and he'd go heel and just make fun of the city, and then they would go like, one, 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 and start giving him ones. It was great. Dillinger was the perfect heel like this. This gimmick works good as a face and a heel. I love it. Um, on April 27, 2016, episode of NXT, he defeated Buddy Murphy and was scheduled to face the debuting Andre Cian Almas at NXT TakeOver The End, where Dillinger was defeated, although he re- received praise for his performance. On September 28th, episode of NXT, after defeating Angelo Dawkins, Dillinger was approached by Bobby Roode. If you guys remember last year in September, where Bobby Roode approached him, who proposed the team-up for the 2016 Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic, where Dillinger accepted. Uh, the following week, Dillinger and Roode took on Sanity, uh, Sanity's Alexander Wolf and Sawyer Fulton. And during the match, Roode walked out on Dillinger. So the second time in the NXT career of Ty Dillinger, where uh, a partner walked out on him. And this resulted in the team losing their fir- in the first round. The following week, on October 19th, Dillinger called out Bobby Roode for a match at NXT TakeOver Toronto where me and my, or myself and Cobra Cappy went and it was probably the greatest thing we've ever seen which uh, then Bobby Roode won against Ty Dillinger there. So a lot of, uh, Ty Dillinger's had a up and down road as you can tell ladies and gentlemen and it, it's crazy. He des- This is why I say he deserves it and he's such a hard worker. He's been with the company for all this time. Even got like his trial back then and got released and still came back and they still put him through this this, this hell but Dillinger is like the is such a workhorse, and that's why I love the guy, and that's why we can get behind the guy. Not just because he's from our hometown. The guy is literally a awesome workhorse and an incredible wrestler. Um, on December fourteenth, two thousand sixteen, episode of NXT, Dillinger defeated Eric Young by disqualification in the number one contenders match, Fatal Four Way qualifying uh, qualifying match. Sorry, at NXT Takeover San Antonio, Dillinger was defeated by Young following a distraction from Alexander Wolf and Kalian. Uh, if I'm saying this right, Kalian Dane. Uh, NXT TakeOver Orlando this year. Dillinger would team up with Roderick Strong and Cassius Ono and Ruby Riot to take on Sanity, which was a great match, an eight-person mixed tag team match in a losing effort, though. Uh, I called Sanity to win that match as well. Uh, Dillinger made his final NXT appearance on April 5th set of tapings of just this past week, or past couple of weeks, and closed out the event in a steel cage match against Eric Young, which he won. It was a great steel cage match. I suggest you guys go watch it. It was amazing last week. And he bid a farewell to the audience with a massive 10 chant. On January 29th of this year, Dillinger was a surprise entrant during the 2017 Royal Rumble pay-per-view. You guys remember, he came out at the number 10 and lasted five minutes before being eliminated by Braun Strowman, which... uh, (laughs) Which, of course, he wasn't going to be the one to eliminate Braun Strowman or else. And they had, they had plans for him, the big push for him, but that's all right. On April 4th, episode of SmackDown Live, after WrestleMania 33, Dillinger made his main roster debut. And we all know he defeated Kurt Hawkins, the cringe Hawkins. So, now we're into the, the end of the part of the episode, guys. Uh, unfortunately, it's the end. I love to talk about Ty Dillinger all day, but I'll get right into the end of it here. What's next for Ty Dillinger? Um, in my opinion, he should get a big push. I know WWE has other plans. Uh, they want to really push Baron Corbin and, uh, uh, sorry, Braun Strowman this year. Um, eventually, I think Ty Dillinger uh, could get uh, more over. I think the 10 movement could even be the next Yes movement if it continues to grow and they do it a certain way. So it'd be, it'd be awesome. I think he'd be a perfect mid-card champion right now. He's got the potential to be there. Um, he could be even a dark horse for Money in the Bank. What if he wins Money in the Bank and they have plans for him next year? With the, he maybe he holds the briefcase till then. They turn him heel. He's a heel guy that holds the briefcase. You know, the perfect briefcase. Who knows? Uh, maybe even an underdog story like Daniel Bryan. Maybe 
I don't know, something like that. Like, not maybe like something against the authority, but, you know, they build them up as an underdog story tying in with uh, Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, something like that. Um, he could t- potentially be the next guy WWE is actually looking for. I think he has that potential, to be honest. Uh, I know the guy, they, they really want Roman Reigns to be the guy, but you know what, Ty Dillinger, I know he's old too, but for right now, I think Ty Dillinger has that ability. I just don't think WWE sees it that much. And that's a shame, but whatever. I think Ty Dillinger could be, again, like I said, a perfect mid-card champion. Um, a few with the Miz, I would love to see, but now Miz is gone to Raw, so we won't be seeing that. Um, they had their little Twitter feud back in December 2016. A feud with Ziggler would be awesome. I'd love to see T- uh, Dolph Ziggler maybe bring back his perfection gimmick, go against the perfect 10. That'd be insane. I think a, a good feud with these two would be awesome. Um... The guy has worked so hard to where he's at right now. He deserves every, anything put in front of him. I hope they use him right and he's not just gets buried and becomes a jobber. That's my last hope is he becomes a jobber. A lot of people tell me that, oh, he's probably just going to become a jobber. It's typical WWE. I can agree with them. WWE is typical in a lot of stuff like that. I really hope he doesn't. Ty Dillinger is a exceptional wrestler. He's worked so hard and done so many things for the company to where he's at now. He's 36 years old. Now will be the time to push it. WWE needs to get behind this 10 movement. They the, the chant it in Raw. He's not even there, and they chant it on Raw. They've been chanting it ever since before he made his main roster debut. I think they could really get behind this 10, 10 movement and build it. Um, they just need to put effort into it as much effort as Dillinger has put into the company. So we'll see what's next for Ty Dillinger. Um, I really do do hope they use him properly, and I I praise the guy. Like I I can't wait. I hope he's at Access next year when me and Corporate Cappy head over the Mania. I really want to meet the guy and and you know just talk about like Niagara Falls and stuff, and just talk about his career and just, just let him know like I, he's definitely an inspiration for for me. Like I don't want to be a wrestler, but he's just he's one of the people I look up to in life, man. He's 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 awesome. Um, other right, than that, guys, that is, I think, going to do it for this episode of the Sunday Night Heat. Episode number 10, the perfect 10, the backstory and history of Ty Dillinger and a tribute to Ty Dillinger. Right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian-based WWE podcast. It talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred, and we say pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching up at No Holds Barred WP. You can also subscribe and follow the channel and our podcast on our several links. YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR, Spreaker, Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, and iTunes and Stitcher by searching up The Lowdown Show. Everything will be posted on there for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you next time.